Hello, so today we are going to talk about the wave equation of the vibrating string. The wave equation is given by this uh, differential equation, which is partial differential equation, delta y del x squared equal 1 by v squared, delta x, delta y, del x squared. Okay, so as you see over here, we are having a string. Uh, what we will be doing today is we are going to discuss the two types of uh, problems the two types of problems uh, the first type okay i won't be discussing too much about the details of this equation but i will just let you know that the position or the vibration depends on x as well as time okay uh, as you will understand when i discuss about the two problems okay keep that in mind we are going to discuss two problems so uh, firstly, let us understand what we are having. We are having a string of length L. Okay, so for both the problems, we are having a string of length L. Okay, and this one, it is the x-coordinate. Okay, let us call that one as x, ox, and this one as oy. So what is happening over here in this first problem is that we are not striking it like that okay even though it vibrates but what we are doing is we are changing the initial position we are not imparting any velocity we are just changing the position from this one to this one and then we release it okay so it vibrates we did not impart any velocity or anything we just hold it at a different position and then release it okay so that is what is happening if you notice over here that if we change the position then the y coordinate changes okay suppose we are holding it in this way okay but also keep note that we can hold it like this okay and then release it it will still vibrate okay but okay for the problem that we are going to discuss today okay let us say that we raise it to a high edge okay something like that and then we release it again we did not impart any initial velocity so the y coordinate for this point it will be the x coordinate it is in of course l by 2 okay suppose we are holding it from the middle and then the y coordinate it will be h okay since we are raising it to a height h if you notice what is happening over here each and every point of the string it is having a different y coordinate and a different x coordinate right that is also true when it starts vibrating okay so what can we say we can say that the y coordinate it depends on x and once it starts vibrating the y coordinate it depends on time okay just take a look uh, in case you are not understanding so you can easily see that it depends on x so no problem but that it depends on time just consider this particular point so before it was over here so once it start vibrating the y coordinate changes okay come up come down okay so that is why it depends on time okay so i hope that is clear so if we have to solve this partial differential equation we are going to need the initial conditions as well as the boundary conditions okay so let us first talk about the boundary conditions The boundary conditions for this particular problem okay or for problems where you raise uh, the string like this or in any shape that you like okay even like that what is happening is at the end points okay the y coordinate it's always zero because it is always fixed at the end so the boundary condition the first one is that at x equal to zero y is equal to zero and the second one is that at x equal l y is equal to zero now what about the initial conditions the initial conditions the first one again i repeat we are holding the string in this position okay so if you notice it no longer depends on time okay because we are holding it steady 
we are holding it steady initially at time t equal to zero and then we just release it so at t equal to zero y naught which is the initial position it will only depend on x it will be a function of fx what exactly is this fx okay sometimes it is given or sometimes you are just given a shape okay if you are given a shape then you are you have to find this fx okay but keep note that it only depends on x okay the second one i keep on repeating that point that you are not imparting any velocity okay what we are doing is okay we did not strike it like that okay so since you, if you strike it like this it's like you are giving a, a velocity in the y direction okay the velocity in the y direction it's given as del y del, del t okay del y del t it is the velocity along the y direction okay you do not give any initial velocity so that's why at t equal to zero del y del t it will also be equal to zero so these are the initial conditions you did not give any velocity but you were holding it at some positions okay uh, something like that okay that is fx okay i won't be discussing about the second problem before uh, i will be discussing but only after i complete the first problem okay so let's see okay i will just keep this as it is again keep in mind we are solving the problem where we are raising it at the position l by 2 okay so this is the original wave equation we will keep it as equation one if we have to solve this one we will have to substitute we will have to separate the variables okay so i will write it as y equal xt where x depends on x only and t depends on time only okay so if you substitute it over here you will be getting now y it's equal to xt but t no longer depends on x it depends on time only so you can take it outside so you will be having del 2y del uh, x square sorry del 2x similarly over here 1 by v square and over here y it's equal to xt but t you can take it outside uh, uh, sorry uh, del, del t square over here it should be del t square but x you can take it outside so you will be having del 2y del 2 sorry del 2t del t square so keep in mind that once we separate the variables okay now we can actually change everything into a total differential before it is a partial differentiation now we can change it into total differentiation because x depends on x only and you are differentiating with respect to x so the next line you can easily write it as e to x dx square similarly over here x by v square you can easily write this one as d to t dt square we can keep it like this okay but just to be clear we are changing it into a total uh, derivative uh, next what we will do we will uh, separate the variables so we will be having d to x dx square 1 by x equal 1 by uh, v square t d to t dt square so this one it is the space part of the equation and this one it is the time part of the equation we will let it to be equal minus k square why exactly minus okay that will be discussed uh, in the next video okay but for now let us just take it as minus why the negative sign it's another point to be discussed okay so now what we will do we can solve the space part equal to minus k square okay if we solve the space part equal minus k square you will be getting d to x dx square plus k square x equal to zero and if you solve the time part equal to minus k square you'll be having d to t dt square plus k square t equal to zero okay so that that is what we are having next okay i still need this so i'll keep it as it is next what we will do okay so this one it is a total differential equation uh, k square v square 
over here it should be k square b square t if you notice since we are dealing with waves the following formulas below will also have to be used okay if you notice that k kv it's equal to omega okay i can keep it as keep it like this okay or i can change it to omega which i will do okay d to t okay uh, omega square t okay i can write it like this and this one i will keep it as it is next what i will do i will solve these second order differential equations if you solve them you will be getting x equal a1 cos kx plus b1 sin kx and if you solve this one you will be getting an t equal a2 cos omega t plus b2 sin omega t okay actually i think i should erase this one so that i can write it better okay but keep in mind that we have initial conditions as well as boundary conditions okay but if you remember that y it's equal to x t x times t so y you will actually be getting cos kx plus b1 sine Sorry, this one is t. Sorry, this one is small x. And this one is small t. Okay, if we solve that differential equation, we will uh, be getting this. Uh, b1 sine kx, a small letter x, times t. a2 cos omega t plus b2 sine omega t. Okay, so it's we have actually got uh, a, a kind of a general solution over here now we just need to find the constants okay but okay now we need to find the constants so we will have to use the boundary conditions as well as the initial conditions okay now using bc1 okay i will name this one as equation 2 using the boundary condition 1 at x equal to 0, y it's equal to 0. So 0, it will be equal to, if you substitute x equal to 0 over here, you will be getting uh, a1 cos 0, which is 1, a2 cos omega t plus b2 sine omega t. You can divide the whole thing by this one. Okay, this one works for any time t. For any time t, this point it's always fixed okay so it may happen that this one it's unequal to zero so you can divide by something that is unequal to zero and you will be getting a1 it's equal to zero so if you got a1 equal to zero we can substitute now in equation two therefore equation two becomes equation two becomes y equal b1 sine kx times a2 cos omega t plus b2 sine omega t next what we will do we have used boundary condition one now we can use boundary equation two boundary condition two okay that is at x equal l y equal to zero this one is at x equal to zero y equal to zero so now we can use boundary condition two in the third equation we can use boundary condition two in the third equation which will give us y equal to zero b1 sine kl times this whole thing okay which we can divide it with okay divide the whole equation with this you will be getting okay you will be getting b1 sine kl equal to zero this one may not be equal to zero so if you solve this one you will be getting b1 equal to zero or sine kl 
equal to zero. But if b1 is equal to zero, then y will give you equal to zero. Okay, it won't be able to describe this whole uh, phenomenon that is happening, the vibration, because it's always saying that y will be equal to zero. That is, it will. Uh, if you relate it, then it will just come down to y equal to zero, which is not true. Okay, eventually it will come down to y equal to zero, but it does not describe the whole phenomenon that is taking place. Okay, so we will ignore this one. So we will take only sign kl equal to zero, which gives us that kl equal n pi. So k equal n pi by l, which we can substitute it over there. And keep in mind that omega equal kv, okay? Keep in mind that omega equal kv everywhere. Okay, so just note that omega equal kv, k depends on l, uh, k depends on n, so omega will also depend on n. Okay, so what we will be getting is y, so equation 3 becomes b1 sin n pi x upon l a2 cos omega t plus b2 sin omega t so this is what is happening next what will we do okay uh, we can do a bit of simplification over here okay i will write it here Uh, so I can multiply b1 and a2, which gives us another constant, which I will name it as a. a sine n pi x upon l cos omega t plus b1 b2 will give you another constant b sine n pi x by l sine omega t. Okay, so we have finished using the boundary conditions. Now we will use the initial condition. Okay, the initial condition. Okay, we did not impart any velocity. I think that was initial condition two. Okay, we did not impart any velocity. At t equal to zero, we were just holding it still. We did not impart any velocity initially. We did not give any velocity. Okay, so this is what is happening. So if we have to use this initial condition, since it involves derivatives, therefore we will have to differentiate this one partially with respect to t. So before using this one, actually you will be differentiating with respect to t, differentiating equation 4 partially. Okay, so what we will be getting, del y del t, this behaves as a constant, so you will be having minus a omega sine n pi x by l sine omega t plus again b omega sine n pi x by l sine omega t. So this is what we are having. Now we will use the initial condition that is at t equal to zero. Del y del t is equal to zero. So we will be having, so t is equal to zero, which this first term will be equal to zero, b omega sine n pi x by l sine omega t. Sorry, uh, I think there should be a cos somewhere. This one will be cos. If we differentiate it partially so we will be having this again what this implies this happens for all x okay this happens for all x so sign it may not be equal to zero anymore it may not be equal to zero so we can divide the whole thing by sign and we will be getting b will be equal to zero okay again i repeat 
for some x okay maybe at this point or this point this point this value of sine it may not be equal to zero that is why we can divide the whole thing by sine and we will be getting that b is equal to zero so equation four becomes okay so equation four becomes equation four uh, okay so it becomes y it's equal to so b has become zero n by x by l cos omega t so this is what we are having we still have one initial condition that we have to use okay that initial condition will be used after we use the superposition principle okay to describe the whole phenomenon we will use the superposition because since it is a partial differential equation okay superposition y it will be equal a n sine n pi x pi l and over here instead of cos uh, omega t we can even write it as omega n because remember that omega depends on n okay but i will still be writing it as omega t okay but you can easily write it as omega n because it depends on n okay but i will be writing it as omega t uh, it's just a matter of notation okay you can choose anything that you like okay so i will do it like this take the summation next we will use initial condition one initial condition one at t equal to zero y naught that is the initial con the initial position it's given by fx so we will be having fx equals summation an sine n by x by l okay name this one as equation 5 and if you substitute t equal to 0 you will be having this now we just need to find a n okay so a n will be 2 by l if you use Fourier series okay fx sine and by x by l dx so this is what we will be getting okay but again i repeat this fx it may be given to you what it is or we have to find it by using the figure that we are given okay so in this state we were given this a figure that looks like this okay so we just need to find fx okay which we will do now okay so i will write uh, this one okay i will need this equation five again okay so we were given that initially the x position and the y position okay it was given something like this we were raising it to a height h the coordinates of this one it's l by 2 h okay we can name this point as p and this one as q so if we have to find fx fx it is this whole thing so fx is composed of two line segments op and pq okay so now we just need to find equation of op which is a line passing through 0 0 and l by 2 h so we can use that okay to get okay y minus 0 by x by h minus 0 equal okay x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 so you will be getting y equal 2h by l x so this one is the equation of op but again fx it is the whole thing so what we will be getting we will also be needing equation of pq equation of pq it is 
y okay minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 0 minus y1 x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 uh, x2 minus x1 y minus edge y minus edge you will be getting okay so just note down okay i'm just writing it down okay so i just need to simplify this one you will be getting 2x minus l upon l okay which i can do simplify further so you will be getting y minus edge upon minus edge equal okay l minus 2x upon l into edge so therefore y will be equal to 1 okay you will be getting minus 2 h x upon l plus 2 h so this is what we will be getting so this one was the equation of pq so what i will write over here what is fx fx is the equation of op and also the equation of pq plus 2h and the conditions over here is that okay op it is from 0 to l 0 less than x less than l and from here to here it will be l by 2 less than x less than or equal to l pq it's for this uh, x okay so this is what we will be getting and if you remember we had been calculating a n which is integration 2 by l 0 to l fx sine n pi x upon l so we will actually need to split this integration instead of taking the integration from 0 to l directly since it composed of two separate functions we will be writing it in this way 0 to l by 2 and then we will write this one here dx sine n pi x by l dx we will add we will add them split the integration like this and l by 2 to l and then minus 2 h x upon l plus 2 h sine n pi x upon l dx so if you calculate this one you will be getting a n and after getting a n you will substitute it back over here to get the whole solution we'll substitute in 5 to get uh, the whole solution I hope that is clear so that is about the first type of problem that we are discussing okay the second type of problem the second type of problem that we will be discussing is when you are giving an initial velocity okay we are not holding it in any kind of position the initial position remains fixed we are giving an initial velocity in that direction okay so for the second problem we also need the boundary conditions the boundary condition the first one it states that okay at these points are always remain fixed y equal to zero at x equal to zero the second one called y equals zero at x equal l what about the initial conditions the initial condition is that okay number one at t equal to zero what is happening at t equal to zero you are not doing anything the position remains fixed okay y equal to zero at t equal to zero and number two you are giving a velocity okay so del y del t it depends on x okay which is a function of x again so we can write this one as vx at t equal to zero okay so how actually do we do how actually do we solve this problem i will just give you a clue 
Okay, so remember that we when we solve the original wave equation, we got y equal a1 cos kx plus b1 sine kx. Okay, so th that actually works up to this part as well. Okay, but it's just that now we are having different boundary conditions and different initial conditions. A1 cos uh, omega t plus b2 sine omega t. So, if you use the first boundary condition, okay, using first bc, you will be getting a1 is equal to 0. Okay, okay, you can try it, okay, just like we did. So, you will be getting y since a1 is equal to 0. Now, we will be getting b1 sine kx a2 cos omega t plus b2 sine omega t. So this is what we will get. Next, we will use the second boundary condition. If we use the second boundary condition, uh, what we will be getting, okay, you can try it using this one. You'll be getting kl equal n pi. So you'll be getting k equal n pi by l. Again, we can substitute it over here. So you will be getting, so y will now change. Okay, so now y it will become a. Okay, b1 into a2, will, I will denote that as a. a sine n pi x upon l cos omega t plus b sine n pi x by l sine omega t. So that is what we will get. Okay, so this is only when using the two boundary conditions, the solution will be reduced uh, to something that looks like this. Now we will need to use the initial condition. Okay, initial condition one. Okay, y equal to zero at t equal to zero. Substitute t equal to zero over here, you will be getting y equal to zero. So if we substitute t equal to zero, you'll be getting zero equal a sine n pi x upon l so this is what we will get okay cos 0 is 1 sine 0 it's 0 at t equal to 0 okay so this actually gives you that a is equal to 0 so after using the initial condition 1 we will be getting this okay so next what we will do, we will substitute it over here. So again, this one will be reduced into b sine n pi x upon l sine omega t. Okay, but now, but now, we need, we need to find b. Okay, so since it has become into something that looks like this what we can do now is actually superimpose okay superposition so you will be having that y is equal to bn sine n pi x by l sine omega t so this is what we will be having and remember that omega depends on n Okay, because omega, it's equal kv. Omega equal kv, but you have got that k equal n pi by l. Okay, so n pi v by l. Okay, so keep in mind that omega depends on n. Now, what we will do, we will use the second initial condition. This is when we need to differentiate. Okay, differentiating. With respect to t if we differentiate this one with respect to t you will be getting del y del t partially you will be getting so measure n equal 1 to infinity bn omega sine n pi x by l cos omega t so this is what you will be getting if you differentiate this one with respect to t partially so after doing this, remember that omega depends on n. Okay, so you cannot take it outside. Okay, taking outside will you can only take it outside 
if it doesn't depend on n so this one depends on n okay you cannot take it outside but cos omega t again depends on n because omega depends on n so you cannot take anything outside the summation okay sometimes uh, we do make mistakes uh, but uh, that is when we write omega n, not omega n okay that is why some authors they will denote it by omega n to make sure that they do not take it outside the summation okay so now we will use the initial condition too which says that del y del t will equal to vx you will actually be getting n equal to 1 to infinity at t equal to 0 this one will be equal 1 so you'll be getting bn instead of bnw i will replace this one by bn Uh, okay, so Bn sin n pi x upon L. Next, we will find Bn, which is 2 by L integration Vx sin n pi x upon L, 0 to L. Again, depending upon what Vx is, okay, sometimes you may have to split the integral, okay, sometimes Vx will be given like this, okay. Uh, okay 2x or something sine x or, or, or whatever okay maybe e, even ex okay from 0 to l by 3 okay and then from l by 3 to x to l by 3 okay de depending depending upon this you will you sometimes have to split this integration maybe into two or three or four parts or whatever depend upon vx okay so after finding this bn Remember that the solution is now this. So you will first have to find Bn. Bn, which is Bn by omega. Okay, it is Bn by omega. Find Bn by, as of, uh, by using uh, Fourier series or the inverse. And then you can find Bn. And then you can substitute Bn over here to get the final solution. That is all for today.